All right, everybody, this is Ross. We are looking at the persimmons today, and I have a nice video for you guys because we're gonna taste, I think, uh, a number of persimmons and kind of compare them side by side and hopefully break down some of the um, components of texture and the components of flavor a little bit, especially when comparing certain varieties. And what you see here actually in front of me um, is a tray of American persimmons that were from wild seedlings. These are, this is from a tree, actually a patch of trees that I found on the side of the road. Um, there's a couple trees there that are massive American persimmons and they're not anybody's trees. Um, they're actually kind of off the side of the highway. And I went over there um, about a weekend or two ago and harvested myself about 700 persimmons. I went a little crazy, but you know what? Uh, no one else was going to eat them. And so I actually went over there and, uh, you know, this has been a dream of mine, basically, to have such an amazing fruit in such high quantity. And I even have trays in here which I have uh, dried. So here's a tray. I'll take this, I'll take it out of there. And you can see some of the these were the really soft ones. I separated it from the, that patch of trees of what I harvested. I separated out the, um, the really soft ones and then I dehydrated these for not too long of a period. I didn't want these to go bad. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen and so I wanted to make sure that I had an, at least a, a large amount of them preserved so that I uh, could definitely guarantee myself persimmons all winter. This is. Definitely my favorite wintertime snack. And then these other ones here, which are still orange, it's, it's weird how they turn black like that in the, in the dehydrator. But these that are still orange, these are actually, about a week or two ago, they weren't soft like they are kind of now. And so I can eat probably most of these if I really wanted to. Um, and so we have basically a huge harvest, but this is a good, I think, comparison uh, between, you know, an American persimmon from like a wild seedling uh, and then American persimmons from actually my own trees or even Asian persimmons or hybrid persimmons from my own trees. So that's what this is here is that we have, uh, I've been eating a number of persimmons over the, the last month or so. And so right now I've actually, today went out and harvested, these are Miss Kim Miss Kim is a Asian persimmon that is astringent, and so it's not ready. I did harvest these rather hard, and I like to let them soften up on the tree. This is one that I, I wanted to harvest a little bit early just to see what would happen, what the flavor would be like. But the longer they hang on the tree and can soften on the tree, the better the flavor typically at least should be. So we have Miss Kim. I harvested just only three of them. The tree's loaded this year especially for the size and the age of the tree. Uh, then we have Rosianca, and so this is the American Asian hybrid. They have this weird, unusual thing on the bottom. A lot of them are, are kind of shriveling up like this, and they kind of look wrinkled. The, top, the tops, though, are still hard, and so the ones that are really, really wrinkled like this, I've been taking them off the trees, and even when, like, this one here has been sitting inside for a while, and so when they sit inside like this, the wrinkledness gets even more. It's just considerably more. Um, none of these on the Rosianca, I think, are really ready. Uh, what, you, what I've been doing now is if they look to, to at least be weird and unusual like that, I'm taking them off a little prematurely. Obviously, some I could probably let them go longer, but um, yeah, these pretty much, for the most part, they just need more time. But underneath here, we have some Rosianca and uh, even some Proc that I have that I've been harvesting. And we even have, I think, maybe a celebrity that we can try today. But here is, right, so here's actually a celebrity. This is a persimmon I haven't covered much on the channel. It's rather flat, um, unlike the Americans, which uh, here's a Proc. You can see this Proc is rather... Um, I would say more along the lines of that shape that you normally see, especially with these seedlings down here. It's 
rather similar. They're not as flat, although this one here is rather flat. But it seems like Celebrity and another American persimmon, just in general, is a flatter persimmon. Um, I have another one in here somewhere. I'll find it and point it out. Only have two uh, Celebrities. This is the other one this season. So the tree's still getting established. But uh, this actually is a, is a Miss Kim as well. So we'll put that to the side. And then, of course, in here, we probably have a Rosianca that looks good. And then here is a Proc that looks really good. You can see that it's pretty much almost red. It's now moving away from that orange color and it's turning red. Here's another one that's, uh, again, the right shape. A bit darker in color. They're a bit more ripe. And so I want to do this comparison. Um, I think I may have given away, actually... <laughs> Oh no, here is a Rosianca right here that is looking solid. And this is again also very ripe and also starting to look actually this redder color, this darker orange. So we'll get to try basically a Celebrity compared to the Rosianca, compared to the Proc, and compared to so, uh, some um, American seedlings, American persimmon seedlings. The other thing I want to mention uh, we have some, again, that are dried, so we'll try some of those. And the difference, I guess, in that and, uh, and how the, the persimmon changes when it's, when it's dried. And then the other thing I want to mention is that we do actually have, as well, a number of non astringent persimmons outside. These are things like the Giro types. I have an itchy Giro that's loaded. I also have a, not only an itchy Giro, uh, but I have a tam can that's also non-astringent. And so I've taken uh, one or two persimmons prematurely off of the tam can uh, just to see where they're at and to figure out when I should be harvesting them. They are relatively orange. It's, you know, this Miss Kim, although Miss Kim isn't soft yet, it is basically fully orange. And I would imagine soon they're going to start softening up on the tree especially if we get a frost that comes in here that's significant enough. Um, we've had a couple frosts already, but the, the Tam Cam and the Giro are very rock solid hard and they're still not even fully orange. There are a couple spots here and there. You'll see maybe like on the underside of the fruit or on the other side of the fruit, you'll see that they're not really ready. And so when I took them off the tree, they were actually quite good and still quite sweet, but the texture you could tell was still a bit hard. It still needed more time. So we haven't really been able to evaluate those two trees yet in terms of the non-astringents. Um, and I'm excited to have like really, really good non-astringent persimmons like the Giro, like what you would see at the store, a Fuyu type, um, and compare that of a store-bought to my own persimmons off my own tree. I imagine my own, they should be much better because they're gonna be picked at a better time. But this is, video is all about the astringent types. So let's, um, let's start off with the basics, I guess. Let's look at some of these American persimmon seedlings that, uh, yeah, I, you know, they don't have names, found them on the side of the road. This is, I guess, what an American persimmon should taste like. In my mind, they're extremely good. And so you don't really need, my, my personal preference is, you really don't need a American persimmon or a named variety of, of persimmon. Uh, if you wanna grow the astringents, I think the big bonus obviously is in the size. Now, I think there's definitely a bonus probably in productivity and the amount of seeds and also probably maybe even the flavor. But for me, I really, really like these American persimmons. And so when I found these patch of trees, I was blown away. The one downside I think with these, if you don't let them last long enough on the tree, you don't let them you know, get soft enough and lose all that astringency, one, you'll have some of that astringency, but two, there's a fragrance about them. And you can smell the fruit very well. That one only had one seed. The other one had two seeds, but I've eaten a number of these and some of them have five or six seeds in them and they're very small. 
It depends on the tree, obviously. It depends on the fruit on the tree. But this fragrance is um, very present. And for some people, that cannot be good. To me, that's a really good sign. A fruit that smells really good is going to taste really good. But this fragrance, I find, when you first start out, can remind people of like cleaning supplies. When I first got into persimmons and had some of my own American persimmons, that were some of them were kind of past their prime, and I think that was maybe part of it. Maybe it was like a little bit of sort of like a fermentation going on in there. But if you don't get them perfect, and you don't really even have to have them super perfect, but that fragrance there, honestly, could be too much for people to handle. I love the fragrance now, but I gave these to somebody recently, and they that's what their, their one complaint was. And then when they tried some of these others that we're gonna try, they didn't have as nearly as much of that fragrance, and it wasn't uh, intrusive for them. But I, I do think even, you know, Proc as an example, as good as it is, it's gonna have some of that fragrance. So let's try now Proc. And then we'll try Celebrity. I don't know where Celebrity went, here it is. Okay, let's try Proc. This is historically my favorite and really is just a larger, kind of what I'm coming to, it's just a larger American persimmon. So it's a bit smoother in texture. There's definitely an, an increase in fruit quality. I, you can tell, like, I love these Americans. I'll, I would never really complain about them. In fact, again, they're my favorite fruit. But this proc seems to just up at another level. And so it's typically a better texture. It's a larger fruit. Um, the seeds can be about the same, believe it or not. Um, some of these have a lot of seeds, some of them have none. And so it's very sweet, uh, smooth is a good way to describe it. I think it's just, and it depends on how ripe it is. So some of these others down here, if I get one that's really, really, really soft, which I'm sure I'll find a good one here. Some of them are even like drying up at this point. They're so small, these fruits. Eh, it's hard to pick out the good one because you can't even really tell by looking at some of them sometimes. But let me just try this American again. Different flavor. More of a raisin in this one. Which is really my favorite part about persimmons. Three seeds... You know what? I think the main complaint, the main difference there is in the flavor and can be in the texture. But the texture is rather similar, I would argue, because it depends on when you when you actually eat this proc. If I let this proc continue to ripen, it'll change quite a bit and it'll turn into a very jammy texture like this. Whereas this is jammy, but more like... Uh, Just a smoother jam, whereas this is, um, I, I don't know how to describe it exactly. This, these American persimmons are just thicker in texture, a thicker jam, like a pastry, whereas these are just like uh, a really, actually like a store-bought jam. And so I don't like this texture nearly as much. So believe it or not, this is going to sound crazy, but I like the little American persimmons more than this proc right now. And, but... I do think it, a lot of it has to do with when exactly I'm eating this proc. There's less of the fragrance, and there's even less of the dried fruit flavor right now. So for me, I like the both of them, and that's coming right now in this more ripe American persimmon. Um, let's try Celebrity. Um, I do think it's very good, in fact, Maybe the one difference actually, Proc is just a lot sweeter, it seems like right now as well. Let's try Celebrity. Hopefully this is ripe enough to eat. It seems rather hard actually. Very interesting texture.
Hmm. This one tastes a bit greener than the others. It's almost chewy. It has a greener flavor, so to me, it's a bit earthier. The texture is a bit strange, like, uh, like it wants to be crunchy, but it's not. And it is slightly astringent because I guess we just ate it too soon. So, you know, these fruits are wildly different. Um, even between these American persimmons on the tree, or that I found, you know, from one tree to the next, or even one fruit to the next on the same tree. That was very astringent. So that just was not right, and I think that's probably why the texture was so weird. Okay. So now I have really that dry mouth feel, and it's kind of everywhere. I don't mind a little bit of that. I like it. Um, some people hate it. When it's too much, it's definitely too much, and I think most people would probably agree. Let's try now the Rosianca. It's got the unusual bottom on here that I was showing you guys that's a bit shriveled and very strange looking in appearance. This one I've noted has a very different texture than the others. So this is really like eating a pastry. But a pastry I, I don't think I've ever had. This one's very sweet. I'm liking the persimmon flavor that's coming through. It's a nice quality piece of fruit. The texture is grainy. It's like a grainier jam. Like a jam that maybe that's uh, made with pears or uh, maybe quince. Eh, quince is not, I don't think it's grainy. Very smooth flavor as well. In my mind, it's extremely good. Um, I do, however, might even prefer the American seedling <laughs> and proc over the Rosianca, but it's so close and uh, it's different and it's, I don't think it's really, at least in this current moment, I could say really one is so much better than the other. To me, any persimmon is a good persimmon. So that covers kind of uh, all the persimmons there that I've harvested off my own tree. The Miss Kim, we still need more time. Now, let's look at, just for fun, these dry persimmons. And these are, again, black. They look like dates. So when you have a date, I don't know what the original color is of a fresh date. And when you dry them, this looks rather darn similar. So this one has a lot of seeds in it. There's probably there's probably five seeds in here. So the difference when they're dried like this, it really does taste like a date. It really does remind me of a date, which is really my favorite dried fruit. But I think a really good juicy majul date and the perfectly dried persimmon is very, there's a lot of competition there. There's also other varieties of dates that produce really nice dried fruit. And so I, I've had a few that really are good, like uh, the Lulu date is one of my favorites. This uh, persimmon though, when you dry them in a dehydrator intentionally like that, they get, and they're fully dried all the way through, they get a, a graininess like a pear that's like a pastry. 
it's almost like you did a um, kind of like a potato pancake. It's very unusual. And um, for me, when they're grainy like that, I actually don't prefer them nearly as much when they're in the dried state or when they're air dried, just kind of left out to dry actually. Because what I'm doing right now with these others, and I, I mentioned this in the beginning, the ones that we didn't dry in the dehydrator are just sitting around here. And so these are slowly drying. I have, I have the fan blowing. And so just moving some circulated air is just drying these very small persimmons rather quickly. And this is kind of how you would just make hoshigaki, right? You would hang them up by a string. Instead of hanging them up, I just put them down here on the ground. I've done that for years as well, doing this traditionally with uh, haichia persimmons. The big acorn shaped ones, you peel the skin. But these, you don't even have to peel the skin. They're so small, they dry so quickly, and the bricks is high enough in them. They don't mold, they don't spoil, they don't ferment. It's amazing, it's very, very good. And then when you dry them like that, very slowly, there becomes a point in time in which they're perfect. And that they don't, they're not grainy, they're not fully dried, like one of these dried persimmons here that we tried, but they, they are perfect. And so that's kind of today's lesson on the persimmon, guys. Um, I would highly recommend you try and grow this fruit. I would also highly recommend you play around with the different ripeness levels. Try dehydrating some. Try, de try uh, drying them at, like the traditional way of ma making hoshigaki. You peel the skin. Try just letting them sit around and just see how long you can let them uh, dehydrate for. And I think it'd be pretty rewarded, honestly. So for me, it is my favorite fruit here because it does produce a very high quality fruit the most consistently. In any case, Thanks for watching this one. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care. Hit that subscribe button. See you guys for more persimmon videos. See you next time.